Jesus. Kasi He's the one that we're gonna talk about today. Amen. Excited na ba kayo to receive the word? Yes. Amen. Alright. So, I'm here to help you. Sabi nga, I'm here to help you to know and to understand what God is going to do in you, what God is going to do to you, and what God is going to do through you. Nakuha niyo yun, mga kapatid. Ako po, hindi po ako ang savior of all. <laughs> but I'm here to help you as we talk about the word of, the, of God today. Um, and we're gonna know how the Lord is moving in your life and how He's gonna do miracles. Sino gusto ng mira milag milagro? Miraglo. <laughs> Milagro. Amen. And only Jesus can do that. Medyo mana kasi yata yung mic ko po. Uh, if we can adjust it. Kasi nagbabibrate siya sa drum. So parang may tumutugtog na ba? So, ayan. Please. Thank you po. Can you still hear me, church? Yes. Alright. So this morning, we're gonna talk about how to break through to your breakthrough. How to break through to your breakthrough. Pag sinabing breakthrough, what does breakthrough means? Pag sinabing breakthrough, this breakthrough right here, when we say breakthrough, it's like an advancement, diba? Parang success yun. Parang halimbawa sa medical uh, or sa science, like a breakthrough has been discovered. Parang may kasagutan. May something good, something great that has been um, discovered or has been revealed. So breakthrough is what God good at. He's good at giving breakthroughs. Do you believe that, church? Now, ang tanong, how do we break through to your breakthrough? Paano tayo makakapenetrate to get the breakthrough that God gives to us. Sino nangangailangan ng breakthrough dito? May it be sa physical uh, um, sickness nyo, may it be sa financial status nyo, breakthrough sa spiritual walk nyo with the Lord, breakthrough sa mga relationships nyo in your life, breakthrough sa studies na pumasa kayo sa exam. Right? All of us, whether you're old, or young, we all need a breakthrough in our lives. Now, how are we gonna break through to our, to our breakthrough? So, I'm gonna share to you a passage. Actually, itong word na to, nagamit ko na siya sa isang mga uh, youth Bible study natin. I, I think sa Commonwealth to, when I shared the story about the bleeding woman. Sino nakakaalam mo? The bleeding woman. And we kind of talked about it a little bit sa uh, Bible study namin. And I was, um, as I continue to study it, God revealed more to me. And this is what I want to share to the church this morning. Ayon. Sabi dito, sabi ni author Janet Corral, he's, she's the one who uh, wrote the book, Destined to Greatness. She said in her book that some people wait for that big breakthrough while other people work. While other people work for that big breakthrough. Kapatid, which one are you? Alam niyo story ni Juan Tamad? Yung nag-aabang siya na makakain ng prutas ng bayabas ko ba yun? Oo, oh, di ba? Alam ko pa. Bayabas. So ang ginawa niya, ano ginawa niya? Naglatag siya ng papag sa ilalim ng puno. At anong ginawa niya? Imbis na tungtungan niya at sungkitin, humiga siya. At ay, nakanganga. Hinihintayin niyang malaglag yung bayabas na gusto niyang matikman. Ang ending, nanga. <laughs> ending, nanga rin siya. So ito yung sinasabi ni Alder Janet Corrin that some people, they wait for their big breakthrough. They wait for their big blessing. They wait for their big miracles, but some people, they work for it. Sinusungkit nila. Kasi they want it so bad. 
Gusto kong matikman yung bayabas ni Lord. Hindi ako hihiga dito at nakangangal. So if you're expecting for a breakthrough, church, the question today is, which one are you? Are you the one who's waiting for it? Or are you the one who's working towards it? Let's pray before the Lord. Father God, we just thank you for today. And we know that since you are a good, good Father, that you have something good, good for us. For every good and perfect gift comes from you. Lord, I pray that there will be openness in this place. Openness sa aming kaisipan. Openness sa aming puso, Lord God. Open our spiritual ears. Open our spiritual eyes. So that we can receive the fullness of your word this morning. Holy Spirit, I ask that you would come minister to every heart that is in this place. That as we receive the word, I pray that you would illuminate it in our hearts. So that it would bring transformation in our lives. So that we can accurately demonstrate that to the world who's looking at us. Father, we thank you for the blessing, for the food that we're about to receive today. May it give nourishment to our spirit. And it may cause our faith to arise. Jesus, you are welcome here. We want to encounter you face to face. We love you. We bless you in Jesus' name. Amen. Alright, so are we going to wait for the break or are we going to work for you? So our passage is found in Mark 5, verses 25 to 34. And this is about the bleeding woman. We're going to read it together. Are you with me, church? Let's all read it. One, two, three, go. And the woman... She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. When she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Immediately, her bleeding stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. At once, Jesus realized that power had gone out from him. He turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? You see, the people crowding against you, his disciples answered, and yet you can ask, Who touched me? But Jesus kept looking around to see who had done it. Then the woman, knowing what had happened to her, came and fell at his feet, and trembling with fear, told him the whole truth. He said to her, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. So you see, the story is actually a part of a bigger story. If you read it sa Mark 5, si Jesus, nakatapos lang niya ng isang milagro at papunta na naman siya sa kabilang uh, nayon para magmisyon. Tagalog na Tagalog na yun, para mag no? And then, on his way there, there is an elder ng church. It's synagogue leader siya. So, para siya ng mga L5 natin ngayon. Um, si, ang pangalan niya, Jairus. So, this official named Jairus, lumapit siya kay Jesus. And he said, Jesus, punta ka sa bahay kasi kailangan kita ngayon dahil mamamatay na yung anak kong babae. So her, his child was 12 years old and she was dying. So since she, he was an elder, medyo bold siyang lumapit kay Jesus. His friends went to Jesus and said, yung, yung leader namin, yung elder namin, kailangan ka sa bahay nila. Kinapatawad ka. Kasi, kailangan mong pagalingin yung anak niya. So Jesus went and accepted the invitation ni Jairus. On his way, nagkaroon ng interruption. So imagine ninyo ha, si Jesus, kumbaga para siyang celebrity na dumating sa kailang bangka. Oo, si Jesus, yan nga pa yung nagpapagaling, yan yung naghihimala. So lahat ng crowd, sumusunod sa kanya. Imagine ninyo yung picture na yun ha, 
maraming tao na kasunod sa kanya. And they were bumping into Jesus. Nakakas, nakakabunguan ni Lord yung mga tao. Kasi ang daming tao, then they were crowding around him. Now, there was an interruption at di ka pumasok yung babae sa story natin. Sabi dito, and a woman was there who had been subject to bleeding for how many years? Twelve years. Bleeding for twelve years. Sa mga kababaihan, ang tatlong araw nga lang, parang, whoo, suffering na. Diba, sakit ng pusun mo, minsan sakit ng ulo mo, nagpapasapasa ka pa. For three days, minsan to a week. Diba, hassle, girls? Oo po. Ano yung panahal na kakilin? Diba sabi? But this woman had been subject to bleeding for 12 years. So imagine ninyo yung pinagdadaanan nung, nung babae for 12 years. Nagtutubong siya. And hindi lang siya basta ang dugo na pwede niyang tapalan or pwede niyang inuman ng gamot. But, it's ongoing as if it made her unclean. Okay, we're gonna talk about that um, impurity na yan. So, sabi dito, she's been subject to bleeding for 12 years. She had suffered a great deal under the care of many doctors and had spent all she had, yet instead of getting better, she grew worse. So, imagine niyo itong babae ito, gusto niya na, very desperate siyang bumalim. Paano titigil yung pagdudugo ko? And she spent all her money, she spent all her resources para pumunta sa mga professional. Diba? Imagine niyo mga bigating doktor natin dito, yung mga bigating hospital, para lang bumalim. Diba minsan tayo kahit walang pangbayad, para lang gumaling yung anak natin, para gumaling tayo, sugod tayo sa ospital, sa kahit na anong ospital, para lang tayo gumaling. So imagine mo itong babae, for 12 years, she's been going to many doctors, spending a lot, pero ang sabi pa dito, instead of getting better, she grew worse. Lumala ba? Ano ba sa yung doktor kaya ito? Ano doktor kwakwak yata ito? Kasi instead na gumaling siya, lumala yung pagbibig niya. Now for some of us church, many of us here, we've been bleeding for 12 years. We've been carrying something that's so heavy in us. Nakinikerry na natin, matagal na. May it be sin? May it be guilt? May it be the physical sickness? May it be emotional sickness? May it be your mental sickness? May it be your bulsa sickness? Baka rin yung sabi ni Girl. Pumapasok na kasi siya sa school, so kailangan niya yung baon. Diba? So all of us is carrying something. All of us May, may, maybe all of us are bleeding for 12 years na. Ano yung utak na hindi mo mabayad-bayad? Ano yung sagot na hindi masagot-sagot sa buhay mo? Anong kasalanan ang hindi mo malagulat mo? And you've been carrying that for 12 years and instead of getting better, it, it gets worse. Kasi minsan, pupunta ka pa ng church to feel good, to find comfort, to find encouragement. For a while, it's okay. Pag uwi mo, bakit Lord ganun pa din? Nagpupunta naman ako sa sento. Nagpa-Bible study naman ako. Nakikipag-chat naman ako sa leader ko. Nagpapapray naman ako. Every week na, nasa Alpar Call pa ako. Pero bakit parang lumalala yung pakiramdam ko, lalong lumalala yung sitwasyon ko? At ang tagal na Lord! Paano ako gagaling? That's the woman in our story. Do you break through to your breakthrough? The first one is you have to break through the situation. 
Now we recognize our situation. I hope you recognize yourself and you can identify yourself sa bleeding woman na to. Who's going through a suffering for a long time. Na kahit nagsisimba, kahit na pumupunta sa mga professional, kahit lumalapit sa pastor, kahit nagpapapray sa pastor, sa mga leaders nila, hindi sila gumagawin. Hindi gumaganda yung sitwasyon nila. The first key to breaking through to your breakthrough is to break through your situation. Church, minsan pag mahirap na yung sitwasyon, madali tayo gumib up. Kasi we depend on what we see. Kapag hindi tumataas yung sweldo, hindi na maganda buhay natin. Pag hindi na tayo nakakabili ng magagandang damit, ang tingin mo, hirap-hirap mo na. Pag hindi ka na nakakapag-load, parang, ah, 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 Totoo yan, young people, nakangiti kayo sa akin, I can relate. Diba? Pag masama na yung situation, we tend to give up so easily kasi we feel so discouraged. What's discouraging you today? Ano ang nagpapahina ng loob mo? Dumating na ba kayo sa point na sinabi nyo na I give up. Ayoko na. Lagi na lang ganito. Paikot-ikot, pabalik-balik, hindi naman gumagaling. Hindi gumaganda yung situation ko. Isisabi sa 1 Peter 5.7 to give all your worries and cares to God because God cares about you. Sabi mo sa katabi mo, God cares about you. God cares about you. God cares about you. Pag sinabi care, hindi ka lang niya iniisip. Gusto niya ibigay whatever will help you. Kasi sabi ko nga, yan ang business ni God is to give breakthrough sa mga nilikha niya. To give victory sa mga anak niya. But sometimes we don't experience the breakthrough because we don't go to the right doctor. Sabi sa Psalm 24, Even though I walk through the darkest valley, I will fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. When it gets dark, when we feel lonely, when we're all alone, parang yung babae, Kasi you see, in their Jewish culture, this woman who's bleeding for 12 years, she is ritually unclean. So, ibig sabihin, kapag ikaw ay may sakit, sa kultura nila, sa tradisyon nila nung mga panahon na yan, kung ikaw ay may sakit, kung ikaw ay may uh, pinagdaraanan or may ketong, tama po ba ketong, or nagdutubo ka, unclean ka. Ibig sabihin, if you are impure, hindi ka pwedeng tumabi sa mga tao. Hindi mo pwede silang hawakan. Hindi ka nila pwedeng lapitan. Kasi madumi ka sa kultura nila, sa tradisyon nila, sa lo nila. It makes you um, ritually unclean. So this girl, imagine mo, 12 years yung bleeding niya. Ni pamilya niya, hindi siya mamalapitan. Mga kaibigan niya, nilayuan siya. Kasi no one wants to touch her. No one wants to talk to her. Kasi kapag ginawa nila yun, magiging impure din sila. Magiging unclean sila. And we know that that's the law of God. That if you're unclean, you cannot go to God. If you're impure, you cannot go to the presence of God. Kasi hindi pwedeng magsama ang maduling at ang malinis. So you see yung kultura nila? So imagine nyo, yung babae for 12 years, mag-isa. Going through the toughest season ng buhay niya. Yet, here's David encouraging us that even though we walk through the darkest valley, we can fear no evil for who's with us? 
the Lord is with us. His rod and His staff, they comfort us. Are you bound? We feel comfortable when we're in the dark, when we're, we're in sickness, where we're lacking, when we're lacking, but may patungkol lang sa atin. Do we feel comfortable? Sometimes, mga Kristiyano pa yung unang bumibitaw na yun. Kasi, they do not believe that God can do something about it. Here's the lady. Let's go on. Sabi dito, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his Pag sinabi cloak, yun yung robe ni Jesus. And in their uh, Jewish culture, di ba ang mga lalaki mahahaba ang suot nila? Parang long down competition na <laughs> yung mga guys doon. Kasi mahaba yung robe na suot nila. Now when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Now this woman who's bleeding for 12 years, who's an outcast of the community, she took up courage and she mastered the courage. Nagkaroon siya ng lakas ng loob to go through the crowd. Diba sabi ko nga, imagine ninyo, minsan kailangan mo sumigaw na unclean, unclean para hindi ka malapitan ng mga tao kasi mahahawaan mo sila ng kadumihan mo. But this girl, she didn't mind the crowd. She didn't mind kung sino yung matatamaan niya. But she said, I'm gonna go behind Jesus. Imagine niyo yung crowd sa upisa, di ba? Ang daming pum pum uh, pumapalo kay Jesus. And imagine niyo na sa crowd na to, mado si Jesus. Jesus, kahit sa likodan mo lang. Kahit matamaan mo ko lang ng daliri ko yung dulo ng damit mo, I will be healed. Imagine the woman going through the crowd just to touch yung kakaunting tela ng damit ni Jesus. At ang babae ito kilala na bleeding for 12 years. So how you're gonna get your breakthrough? You have to break through the limitation. Now you know your situation, that you are hopeless, that you've been going on, um, that, that uh, your, your disease, your lack, your poverty has been going on for too long. Hindi na nasusolve ng doktor, hindi na nasusolve ng pastor ko, hindi na nasusolve ng sponsor ko, hindi na nasusolve ng, ng chewing ko, ng chahin ko, hindi na nila ako mapakain. Ano lang gagawin ko? Break through the limitation. Sabi, when she heard about Jesus, she came up behind him in the crowd and touched his cloak because she thought, if I just touch his clothes, I will be healed. Nasa desperate moment na si Ate Girl Si Ate Girl, sumuko na sa mga doktor. Sabi niya, wala na akong pake kahit itaboy nila ako, kahit nagdudugo ako, kahit matamaan ko na silang lahat, mas masundot ko lang yung dulo ng tela ng damit ng Panginoon. I will be healed. You see, her faith, hindi, maybe He will heal me. Can He heal me? Hindi ka eh. Ang sinabi niya, she declared it, I will be healed. Minsan tayo kahit sa altar, may mga panalangin pa rin tayo hindi masagot-sagot. Nag-expect tayo ng breakthrough pero hindi natin makuha. Why? Because we come here in the presence of God and say, tutulungan mo kaya ako? Sasagutin mo kaya ako? Baka naman ba yung mahihok sa'yo? Baka wala na akong chance, Lord? Pero sige, Try ko lang ha. What's the difference between us and that thing? Sometimes we have doubts because we see our limitations. But our limitation is not God's limitation. Call me 
church. Our limitation is not God's limitation. Kung anong mahirap sa'yo, hindi imposible sa Panginoon. So do not defend your answer based on the limitation that you have. Lord, makakaipabay pamilya ko. Ito na lang yung pera ko. Versus, Lord, ito na lang pera ko, pero mapapakain mo ang pamilya ko. You see the difference, church? Sometimes as, Lord, pangwalong altar call ko na to. Sabi mo, gagaling ako eh. Totoo ba? But the bleeding woman says, tumayo ako sa altar na yan, I will be here because God will heal me. You see the difference, church? How to break through your breakthrough to your breakthrough, break through the limitation. Wala kang pamasahe, hindi ka makapunta dito. That's a limitation. How are you gonna break through that limitation? Hindi ko sinasabi mga upit kayo pang pamasahe. Hindi pa rin kayo yung best girl niya. Right? But young people, how are you gonna break through the limitation of walang pamasahe? Ipon. Diba? Instead na pang milk tea, pangasahe. Instead na pang jollibee, pangasahe. Instead sa kipsal, joke lang. Makatamaan ako ng kidlat nila yung dito. Nagdalawang isip eh. Sa kipsal, dapat si Lord pa rin ako. And nothing is impossible ni Lord. Amen. So you see with the woman, this is her limitation. Sabi dun sa law nila, that if a woman has a flow of blood for many days that is unrelated to her menstrual period, or if the blood continues beyond the normal period, she is ceremonially unclean. As during her menstrual period, the woman will be unclean as long as the discharge continues. And any bed she lies on and any object she sits on during that time will be unclean. Just as during her normal menstrual period, if any of you, this is God, if any of you touch these things, you will be ceremonially unclean. You must wash your clothes and bathe yourself in water and you will remain unclean until the end. That's their law. And I just want you to see the limitation of babae. She could be limited dun sa cloud that are clean. Diba? Hintayin ko na lang sa kanto si Lord kasi baka mahawaan ko yung mga tao. If she did that, she'd miss the opportunity to touch the hem on Jesus' room. Minsan tayo, next week na lang. Kasi hindi talaga kaya ko rin. Bukas na lang ako mag-pray kasi antok na antok na talaga ako ngayon. But God on the other side is waiting for you to receive something from you. Pero tinulugan mo siya. Yun na yung time na may sagot na si Lord sa'yo, may milagro na ibibigay sa'yo si Lord, pero inuna mo yung tulog mo, inuna mo yung barkada mo, inuna mo yung kapitbahay nyo, inuna mo yung teleserye mo. Diba? Isa may mga limitasyon tayo eh, kay Lord. Kaya ang mga sagot sa ating mga dalangin, may nalilimitahan din. Not because God is limited, but because we are limited God. So Matthew 19, 26, Jesus looked at them and said to them, but with God, all things are possible. The doctors could have limit yung chance ng girl, yung hope ng girl. Kasi biruin mo, for 12 years, siguro lahat ng doktor pinuntahan niya na, kung hindi ako mapagaling ng doktor, wala nang makakapagpagaling sa akin. Kung hindi i-epekto yung gamot, wala nang makaka-epekto niya ng maganda sa akin. Kung hindi gaganda ang buhay ko, Lord, wag na lang. But what is impossible to us is possible with God. Sabi po sa katabi mo, all things are possible with God. All things are possible. So pag sinabing all things, 
Hindi 95% lang ang kayang sagutin ni Lord na problema mo. Hindi lang 75% tapos yung sa financial part mo hindi na kayang tugunan ni Lord. But says, all things are possible. Kung may habitual sin ka at feeling mo, hindi ka na makakawala dyan. Kasi lagi mo pa rin ginagawa, lagi mo pa rin naiisip, lagi mong naaalala. Lord, hindi na talaga ako makakawala dito sa past ko. Hindi na ako makakawala sa guilt ko, sa shame ko. Nakakahiya kasi nagpupunta ako sa church, pero ganito pa din ako. All things are possible with God. If God can transform Saul to Paul, persecutor to pursuer of Jesus. How much more than ang ayaw mo yung Panginoon yun sa atin. Romans 8.37 said, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. Do you believe that Jesus loves you? Amen. Do you believe that Jesus loves you? Amen. If Jesus loves you, then this is His will for you. That in all things, you'll be more than a conqueror. Hindi lang siya barely surviving. Alam mo yung tipo sa basketball, nanood, nanood ba kayo ng uh, championship plus nung sa NBA? The Toronto Raptors and um, Golden State. Ginebra. <laughs> Grabe yung import yun ah, from the Philippines. Nanonood kasi kami. Tapos yung score, it, they're very, it's very close. Namang na lang 5 points yung Toronto Raptors. Tapos nahabol sila ng Golden State. So isa na lang. Tapos parang seconds na lang yung natitira sa clock. Matatapos na yung game. So lahat kami, pati si Mama E. Ay Mama E, if you're gonna watch this. <laughs> so, pati si Mama E, nililay hands na yung TV. Oh, Lord siya. Sa TV, pinagpipray niya na yung mga players ng Toronto Raptors. Kasi gusto namin manalo. Ang Toronto Raptors po, isang team sa Canada at nag-iisang team sa Canada. Kaya buong Canada, suportado ang Toronto Raptors during the championship. So si Mama, nagpipray ng ganun. Lahat din ka, kami din ni Michelle, lahat ganun na. Oh Jesus, oh Jesus, ano mo nalo kami? Kasi excited kami lahat. Tapos si Mama E, kwento ko lang ha, ano naman ni Mama E? Tapos si Mama E, na sobrang dasal niya, imbis na i-cheer niya, Raptors, Jesus! Jesus! <laughs> so kami, tingnan, may player bang Jesus sa Raptors? <laughs> Chili cheer. Pero pinagpipray. At nanalo pa din ang Raptors by one point or two points. That's what you call conqueror. Pag sinabi more than a conqueror, you're an overcomer. Ang score mo is 146 to 2. Walang habol ang kalaban sa'yo kasi you are already victorious. Naintindihan mo, mag-shoot mo ng kalaban, nasa 146 ka pa din. Because your spot, your winning spot, has already been secured by Jesus. Naintindihan nyo? The reason why it says more than conquerors kasi hindi lang yung, ha, nakasurvive ka lang. Oh, hindi ka na akong matay ng itong kalaban ah. Narinig nyo ba yung sarili nyo yung sarili nyo? Oh, hindi na naman ako matay mo. Muntik na naman ako nakatulog. Hindi na naman ako nakapagpasa ng bayo. Muntik na naman. Ha, andyan. But if you're an overcomer, nandyan man siya, I don't care. Mahala ka, sumunod ka. At dito na ako eh. Wala ka lang magagawa to get me. Walang muntik, muntik, muntik. Alam mo, nagkamali ako, sorry ah. Kasi madulas ako lang. Napasama ako sa inuman ng barkala. Tapos may chismisan pa. Tapos may sleep over eh. So hindi ako nakatulo. Kaya narila ako sa service. Parang nagsusurvive lang tayo sa walk natin with the Lord. But God 
said he has positioned you in a victorious spot. Kaya nga he's the God of victory. Hindi ka lang winner, champion ka. So naintindihan mo, knowing all these things, we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. So kahit na anong dumaan sa'yo, sakit man yan, ut or utang man yan, or pangbubuli, or opinion ng ibang tao na nakaka-discourage sa'yo, I won't be discouraged. I'm already a champion in the Lord. Sabihan mo pa ako ng pangit, okay lang. Kasi I know, God made me beautiful. I am fearfully and wonderfully made. That's victorious. Minsan tayo nagpapa-apet ko ba? Sorry, yun ba na pakinggan ko yung kapitbahay na? Hindi po na totoo yun. Jesus na. Fake news. Hilig natin makinig sa fake news. Hilig natin magpalakpak. Laganap ng fake news. Because we don't know the truth of the word of God. God said, you are more than conquerors to Him who love us. Now we continue with our story. Now this girl, si ati girl natin, ati girl po, she broke through, she has broken through the limitation. Natouch niya na yung dulo. Hindi siya para buong robe eh. Yung hibla lang, Ganon. Eh sabi niya, I'm healed. Ngayon, ito si Jesus. Naramdaman niya that a power has gone out of him. Nabasa niya ba yung balikan lang natin. Ha? Sorry, hindi ko na type ulit. Pero sabi dito, immediately, say immediately. <laughs> immediately, her breathing stopped and she felt in her body that she was free from her suffering. Immediately to, yung doktor na kinikita niya or minimit niya for appointment, 12 years na silang mga nakikita-kita, hindi siya mapagaling-galing. Pero ito, hibla lang ng damit ng Panginoon. Immediately, her bleeding stop. That's what you call miracle and breakthrough. Immediately. Sino gusto immediately magkaroon ng milagro? Amen. And we'll see how, bakit immediately nakuha ni Ate Girl niyo ang milagro na to. At once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, Who touched my clothes? Sa ibang tao, pag binasa nila to, parang feeling nila galit si Jesus. Kasi may mission si Jesus, papunta siya kay Jairus, sa bahay ni Jairus, para pagalingin yung anak. So you see, it's a big mission para sa kanila, kasi lahat ng crowd nakasuporta, parang, oh, si Jesus, papap, parang may, di ba, pag ganun yun eh. Lakit na, kita ko siya dito, kasi pag may nag-aaway, or may malaking eksena, andun lahat ng kapibahay nyo. Di ba? Pag may sumigaw lang, Hindi na napansin ko dito sa Pilipinas eh. Pag may malaking eksena, nandun ang crowd. Mga usi. So ganun din, ang daming usi sa time ni Jesus. Si, sila talaga yung mga nagpa-uso nun eh, yung chismes. Uy, may malaking eksena si Jesus to. <laughs> Magpapagaling daw si Jesus, oh. mamamatay na yung anak. Paano niya kaya pagkagaling eh? Paano kaya magpimilago itong si Jesus? Taka sunod tayo. And you see, there are many people touching Jesus, bumping into Jesus, walking with Jesus. And he realized, someone touched yung dulo ng robe niya. And he said, who touched my clothes? You know how I read it? Hindi siya yung who touched my clothes na madumi ka. Kasi God knows everything. Do you agree? Do you believe that Jesus knows everything? So Jesus knew who touched his clothes. He knew kung impure o pure yung naghawak sa kanya. He knew kung nasaan yung kung 
umikot ng power niya. And this girl, she was in fear. Why? Kasi she felt like nadumihan niya yung Panginoon sa ginawa niya. And that's the reason why, di ba, sabi, she sneak behind, hindi siya sa harapan ni Jesus, parang magtago siya, nahawakan, kasi natatakot siya na mahawaan niya rin si Jesus. But she said, at once Jesus realized that power had gone out from him, he turned around in the crowd and asked, who touched my clothes? You see, sabi pa ng isang disciple niya, defensive bagad, sino nag-touch ng clothes ko? Ito yung isa sa mga disciple niya. Uy, Jesus, hindi ako yun ah. Nakita mo, nandito ako. Hindi ko inawakan niyan. Jesus, alam mo, daming crowd dyan. Baka isa dyan. Diba, defensive lahat sila. But they didn't get the point of Jesus during that time. When he asked, who touched me? That's when the woman came out in trembling and fear and told Jesus the whole truth. Was Jesus mad? I don't think so. Because he said in verse 34, Daughter, your faith has healed you. Go in peace and be free from your suffering. That is immediately. I don't think Jesus would be mad if you are too aggressive to be in his presence just to get a glimpse Yung makanakaw ka lang ng sandali sa Panginoon, I don't think that's stealing from the Lord. It's pleasing to God. Why? He even called this woman who's bleeding, who's impure, who's unclean, who's an outcast, who's alone. Madumi na. Lahat na lang pwede yung itawag. He called her daughter. And sometimes tayo, we limit our relationship with God because of who we think we are. Lord, so from mga kasalanan ko, Lord, maglalampaso na lang ako dito, Lord. Lord, hindi ko deserve yung blessing mo, Lord, kasi ang namin ko nagawang kasalanan sa'yo. I'm so desperate for healing. I'm so desperate for breakthrough. That's why I'm here. Right? Breakthrough. The condemnation. Sometimes tayo nahihiya. Nakapagtilaas natin yung kamay natin pag praise and worship. Nakapagtawa na tayo kasi kilala nila yung buhay natin. Kilala nila yung nakaraan natin. Kilala nila yung mga tinatawag ng natin. Kaya hindi ko na lang i-receive ko ano yung kayang ibigay ng Panginoon sa akin kasi baka pagtawanan nila ako. Baka sabihin nila na, ay, makasalanan ka pala. Ay, may sakit ka pala. Ay, may kailangan ka pala kay Lord. The people, they're not your God. God said, daughter, your faith has healed. And in Greek word, this healed word is translated into sozo. Meaning, whole, save, made new. So, hindi lang healing sa physical, ang ginawa ng Panginoon sa babaeng ito, kung hindi, binuo niya, ni-restore niya ang pagkatao. Kasi alam ng Panginoon na madumi ang tingin ng tao sa kanya. You see what Jesus did? He honored her faith. And when he honored her faith, he honored her in front of the crowd who's condemning and judging her. Do you want to be honored in front of your enemies? Do you want to be honored in front, in front of the one who's tempting you, the one who's attacking you, the one who's nagpapahirap sa'yo? Activate your faith, church. Because God is pleased when your faith is activated. I don't care. I will go to church. I will read my Bible. I will pray. I will cry out to God. I will kneel down before the Lord. I don't care. Kung anong sasabihin nila. They can't condemn me. Because my God is pleased. Father, your faith has healed you. And you know the reason why Jesus asked the girl to 
kung bakit or kung sino yung nag-touch ng kanyang damit is because the, the, uh, the Lord was teaching the crowd that only your faith can please Him. Kasi ang daming crowd eh. At siguro 75% ng crowd na yun may pangangailangan din. Totoo? Sa crowd na yun, hindi lang yung bleeding woman ang pangangay, may pangangailangan. Hindi lang yung bleeding woman yung may kailangan ng milagro. Sa buong crowd na yun, sa tingin nyo, kahit dalawa, tatlo, apat, lima, may pangangailangan sa buhay yun. Yet, hindi nila nakuha yung answer sa prayers nila o hindi nila nakuha yung pangangailangan nila kahit nakadikit na nila si Jesus. Nagets nyo? Kasi the crowd was following Jesus. MJ, can I invite you here at the center. So yung mga crowd, dahil nga usi sila, huy, may minagro. Diba po, katawan ni Jesus yung nakakadi nakakadikit nila, nakakabangga. Pero hindi nila na-receive yung minagro the same way that the bleeding woman received it. Eh yung babae, nasa likuran lang na, ano pa magigawa ni Jesus, papa, atuso. Pero the greatest miracle happened. Yung hindi mapagaling na sakit for 12 years, immediately, it stopped bleeding. Now here's the question, church. Thank you, MJ. Here's the question, church. Bakit kaya yung crowd hindi nakareceive ng milagro kahit kasama na nila yung Panginoon, kahit nakakabunguan na nila yung Panginoon, kahit naaakbayan na nila si Jesus? What's, what's the answer? Because they don't have the faith. Sila o oh, sila, ano ang gagawin nito ni Jesus? They know that Jesus can do miracles, but they don't ask Jesus. And sometimes that's most of us. We come here to church and look for comfort. Pero paglabas natin, gano'n pa rin. Diba? Nagbabasa naman tayo ng nagsalita ng Diyos. Pero gano'n pa rin. Bakit kaya? Ano ba po na ko? It's because the faith that you need is not there. Do you believe in Jesus? Do you believe that He can heal you? Do you believe that He can do signs and wonders sa life mo? Ang kapatid, kahit nasa darkest valley ka, kahit may yayanig ka, you still believe the same thing. Sabi sa Isaiah 50 verse 9, ito yung um, pangako ng Panginoon sa, na sa nation ng Israel. Kasi ang daming persecutors eh. Ang daming gustong pumatay sa nation ng Panginoon. Sabi, surely the Lord God helps me. Who is there to condemn me? See, we will all wear out like a garment. The moths will devour them. No one can condemn you, says the Lord. Sabi sa Romans 8 and 8 verse 1. So now, there is no condemnation for those who belong to Christ Jesus. Do you belong to Christ Jesus? Amen. Definitely, yung bleeding woman, she belonged to Jesus. Kasi tinawag niya ng anak, ang babae. Those who belong to Jesus are the children of God. Are you a child of God? Yes. Then if you are, there is no condemnation. No one's judging you anymore. If God is not judging you or condemning you, wala ang makakakondem sa'yo. Not even your past, not even your sin, not even the temptation of the enemy sa buhay mo. John 3, 17 It said, For God did not come, for God did not send His Son into the world to condemn the world, but to save the world through Him. That save is also translated so so complete. So you see, the healing is salvation. And salvation is freedom 
freedom is wholeness. Wholeness is breakthrough. Jesus came not just to heal you, but to save you, but to restore you, to make you whole. You see, God knows how broken we are. And no one can fix us the way Jesus would. God does not just want us to feel better. He wants us to get well. Si Jesus, hindi yan after na ma-feel good ka lang. Sunday, okay ka. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. Saturday, medyo okay pa kasi LP. Pero yung Monday to Friday, para tayong talunan. Para tayong walang mga Diyos. Para tayong nawala ng pananampalataya. Pero Sunday, okay ulit. As in, praise God, hallelujah ulit eh. Pero Jesus is not after that. He did not die on the cross for you to feel better. He wants you to be whole. He wants you to get well. He wants your bleeding to stop. He wants you to be, to, to be made whole. To be restored. He wants you to have a breakthrough. Kapati, that's the will of God. And you can only receive breakthrough according to your faith in the Lord. How desperate I am. Sabi to break through the situation, limitation, and condemnation, we have to come from a place of desperation. Stop looking anywhere else. Stop asking help from anyone else. Makakakain ka today, yes. Tomorrow, paano? Makakabayad ka today, bukas paano? Makakapag-aral ka this year, bukas, or next year, paano? Makakahanap ka ng trabaho for three months, after three months, paano? He doesn't want us to, to just feel better. He wants us to be whole and to get well. Let's all stand up.